Some things are just better together. Road trips and mixtapes, chocolate and peanut butter, chips and salsa, <laughs> Shamar Moore and no shirt. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. And today I'm making perfect pairings. Three sets of tools that are just better together. Come on, let's talk about buddy tools plus some bonus tools that will make your quilting life easier. First up, the Precise Cutting Duo. This one and a half inch block lock ruler and a nifty small cutting mat that's easy to turn. This block lock ruler is a game changer. It's accurate and the little grooved edge locks onto your fabric seam for half square triangle, triangles, ensuring perfect alignment every time. Pair it with its buddy, small cutting mat. You can trim blocks without disturbing your fabric arrangement. There are fancy turntable mats, but I find this one infinitely more useful. I think it's six by eight, six by seven and a half, I don't know. Five by seven, fairly inexpensive, easily available and portable. Now, you know, most people think I am crazy to trim to a one and a half inch square and cut off these little sew and flip corners. And when you find out that my friends save them and send them to me by the gallon size bag, you know I'm crazy for sure. But wait a minute, wait a minute, hear me out. With these two tools, I get perfect little blocks that I would normally end up in the trash. So let me show you how I do it. It's so easy. I've got my little block. I lock my little seam in it. And the block lock, see, it just jams right in there and stays. Then you take your rotary cutter, trim, and you just turn the entire mat. I like to do this while I'm sitting and watching TV, or if I'm at a B, you just turn the entire mat. Everything underneath it stays in the same place. Super easy. And then you pull away your trash. And there you have it. Oh, look, I missed a little corner. I missed a corner. No problem. Trim him right up. And there you have it. Perfect little one and a half inch half square triangles. The truth is, if I didn't have this tiny block lock ruler, I would never save and trim these little guys. Never. <laughs> That's crazy. But there's something really satisfying about working with what remains. I can't wait to see all of these little bits collected from the work of many friends in one giant sparkling quilt. Now, this duo of cutting perfection would not be complete without my Quilter Select Rotary Cutter. It's ergonomically designed and a fresh sharp blade make cutting a breeze for left or right handers. You know, everything I'm talking about today is linked in the description box down below and in a pinned comment, so be sure and check those out. Next up is my go-to pair for marking and tracing. The sandpaper board and one of these like magic wand center line rulers. Lots of different people make them. Sandpaper board grips your fabric, preventing it from shifting while you mark or trace. And this little ruler, it's perfect for quickly marking diagonals on squares for half square triangles. I use the board and ruler together to mark half square triangles. I also use the board alone for tracing applique shapes or templates for hand piecing. So let's see these in action. You've, you've seen how to mark a half square triangle, but I'll show you how I do it using these two tools. I have my sandpaper board here filling the frame. I have a five inch square, charm square, and I'm gonna use this smaller ruler. This Fonz and Porter version comes in two different sizes. And I'm just gonna put it here. Take my trusty little mechanical pencil that, oh good, is not out of lead. And you just mark your center line. Guys, it's that easy. Perfect. And then sew on your line and cut. Or if you're cutting, 
mark your center line. Now that's if you want a five inch finished square or a whatever you start with finished square. You can mark that line. Then you can mark the second one, the bonus triangle line, on the other side of the ruler. And the sandpaper keeps it from gripping. Now I slide my pencil right under the corner right here because I don't like my nails to touch the sandpaper. It feels yucky. But it's that easy. Or if you're marking, you want to mark your sewing lines. Line this up corner to corner. You're getting the two, two half square triangles of the same size this way. And like I say, I just slide my pencil right under there and pick it up. And they're ready to sew and go. I mean, it's kind of basic stuff, but it's very useful and it's so much easier than just marking on the table or the mat with your fabric shifting, especially on that bias. Now, my trusty mechanical pencil completes the set. It's the bonus tool. This is a Pentel shaker pencil and you shake it and it will advance the lead. Fabulous. They don't make this version anymore. I think I've had it since college. I know I've had it since college. It's been with me a long time. But what makes this great is this right here. And I'll link to several down below that have a similar make. Is This entire piece right here is metal. And a metal tip makes it less prone to breaking the lead. Always keeps a sharp point. I do prefer a 0.5 millimeter pencil for this, for the tracing and marking on half square triangles. You just get a finer line and it ends up more accurate. You guys know I'm not a stickler for accuracy, but it does help. I also have the Soline ceramic pencil, which is in white for marking the for marking dark fabrics. And like I said, everything that I'm talking about is linked down below if you want to add these tools to your collection. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button if you find this helpful. Last but not least, my cutting and pressing dream team. I have my travel, Rowenta iron, and you guys know I've talked about it before, the OmniGrid cut and press, ow, fold and go board. This is fantastic, but it's also in the way. Oh, this compact iron is perfect to use right next to your sewing machine. It's small and precise. I like the nice pointy tip and it gets nice and hot, but it's large enough that you're not like chasing. You know, some of those guys are really teeny and they just don't get the job done. This one is fantastic. The OmniGrid, what is this called? The OmniGrid Fold and Go Mat is perfect. This side is heat resistant and it's nice and firm. And this side is for cutting. It's perfect for a retreat. It's perfect for right next to your sewing, air, sewing area. It's large enough that you can press or cut an entire block, but it's small enough to set up by my sewing machine. And it's super sturdy. You've seen me use these together in my diamond strings video. I'll link that here and down below. It's also great for travel. I use these to press seams as I piece a block and to trim up as needed. My preferred size is the 12 by 18, but as a bonus, it has a baby sister. <laughs> this little mini one is about the size of a sheet of paper, so it's like 9 by 11. It's great if you're working with small pieces or in small spaces. I used to keep one in our camper when we traveled and it fits into just a regular tote bag really nicely. I have a few extra tips for getting the most out of these tool pairs. Keep your block lock ruler clean for the best grip because it's really tiny and please Please be careful to keep your fingers out of the way. I know that's common sense, but I, it's worth stating. It's little and you're working with a blade. Just be careful. Number two, use various color mechanical pencils or marking tools for marking different color fabrics. I have my pencil, I have the white ceramic, and I have this white 
marking pen by Clover. It's one of those you have to mark it and then let it sort of develop, but it's a chalk. It washes out. It washes out completely. You guys know if you've seen it before, I do not like the friction pens, but you know, whatever works for you. Number three, a small spray mister bottle near your pressing station. You probably already have one of these, but that way you don't have to put water in your travel iron. I know some people are opposed to that, and I don't like it in my travel iron because I don't want to have to like try to get it out if I'm at a retreat. There we have it. My top three buddy tool pairs plus some bonus sidekicks. And that 80s commercial jingle is going to be in my head for a long time. You know the one I mean. You know it. I'll link the ad below so you can share my pain. But guys, which of these pairs do you think is the most useful in your quilting adventure? Or do you have another favorite tool combination? Two things that you always use together. Tell me in the comments because I am always looking for excellent tools. And remember, the key to efficient quilting isn't just having the right tools, but it's knowing how to use them together effectively. Also, remember that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.